What's going on, YouTube? I'm back. I've really been enjoying myself playing tons of Soldier. He is my most played, actually, on the account that I play on the most. Now, I'm not going to call it my main account. Although, if you guys watch the stream, you know, I don't even really have a main account that I play on. You know, some, some days, sometimes I go a span of a couple months where all I do is play on an account named Smexy, or maybe I play on an account named bong ripper 73 maybe i play on an account named borium that isn't even my main account you know if you know me i've kind of abandoned the whole main account idea i stopped really caring about main accounts um back in halo 3 if you don't know in halo 3 it took an incredible amount of time in order to reach the highest rank in the game you had to win 5,000 games because if you won one game in Halo 3, it gave you one experience. And it took you 5,000 experience to reach the highest rank in the game. I had an account that was almost the five-star general, which is the highest rank. I think I had 4,200 experience on that account. And it ended up getting hacked and stolen from me. Um, it was really unfortunate. I still remember like the entire sequence of events right after my account got hacked or I saw that it was recovered to another console, it like scarred me. I still remember the exact feeling of being on the phone with Microsoft support and just having an epiphany, realizing, hearing this woman's voice telling me that I'm not going to be able to get my account back. Um, I realized it before she even had to express it to me explicitly. So I lost that account and I had so much time put into it. And so I got a new account and then I leveled that account up to five star general. Fast forward a couple years and then I think many, many years after Halo 3 died, I still had my five star general account and I even had like 30,000 custom games on that account as well. Some of it was boosted because you could do this thing where you boost your custom games, but you still had to play each game. So I sat in a lobby 30,000 times to do it. Um, I don't know why people did it back in the day, but they just did. Now, after Halo 3 died, there was sort of a little bit of a resurgence. And when the resurgence happened, there was hackers. And if you... Not hackers, I should say modders. And they would mod the game and they would cheat in a number of ways. But one of the things that they did, which it was just so evil in my opinion, I hated it so much. If you got into a game with them, for some reason it would erase all of your account stats. All of your experience would go down to zero. You would still keep your skill rank, so I was still 50, but you lose all of your experience gone. I had like 5,000 something experience. I think I almost had, actually I think I had 7,000 if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I may have. And I ended up losing all of that experience due to modding. So that was almost two five-star general accounts I lost in Halo 3. And then after that, I just completely stopped caring about main accounts in video games because it, it's really about the game itself and how you play it. It doesn't really have anything to do with, with these artificial ranks. The skill rank, sure, that does mean something. But even then, you know, I was the highest rank in Halo 3 in many, many playlists, almost all of them for so long, years I'm talking, years and years. Um, and now in Overwatch, I've been top 500 every season and Grandmaster, obviously, every single season. Um... So it doesn't really mean that much to me anymore. And so that's why I don't really play on a main account. Now, you could make the argument that, oh, well, if you don't care about it, then you should just play on one account. And that's true. That it's a That's a fair counterpoint. But I do like switching accounts just so I can play um, loose. I feel like once I put a lot of time into one account, I sort of get like a... This is all in my head, by the way. I sort of get like a reputation attached to it this is all inside and then i feel like it, i have to take the games more serious and more serious because i have like a reputation but if i play on a random account with a random name i feel like i can play looser and i still try to win obviously but i just play a little um, more creatively i'm not as stressed out because you know i have to play for usually four four to six hours a stream you know i don't want to be taking every single game dead serious the entire time you know that would be so emotionally taxing and I, I just can't do it so 
I like to switch up accounts and it's ultimately, I believe, a waste of time because all of my accounts usually hover anywhere between 4,200 um, and 4,500 on DPS and off tank. So it doesn't even really make a difference when I switch accounts. It's just all in my head. And I think honestly, it's a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but I think there is truth to it. I swear. I remember if you guys remember on Gold Gun, on that account, I I swear I had way better games always on that account. I remember I would struggle to get my main account in the top 500 at the end of the season, and on Gold Gun, I would just I would get it no problem. <coughs> I remember a couple seasons actually. I even placed higher um, on Gold Gun than on my main account by pure mistake. Um, one time I struggled to get my main account into top 500 and then I did, I got it. And then I remember I went on gold gun just to play the end of the season matches. I wasn't even trying to get top 500 and then I just got top 500 that easily. It just happened. And then I went, um, on Smexy, if you guys know that account as well. And that account, that account ended up finishing the season, the highest of all three of my accounts. And I wasn't even taking it seriously at all. And I, I really do think that's that's what makes people play really well because if you're passionate about the game and you really enjoy the game and your mechanics are really good on a certain day, um, I think that's when people play the best, when they're not constrained by really high expectations or um, the failure of losing, you know? I feel like it makes players tight. It's sort of like when you're in basketball and you some players are good when they have a lot of pressure on them um, if you've ever played basketball, you know there's some people when they're in practice, they'll hit every shot. And it's like, why don't you do this in the game? It's because in the game, it, it changes things. You know, it feels like there's something on the line. But when he's playing loose, you know, when he's in the backyard or when they're just at practice, he's like the best player on the team. Um, if you guys have played basketball, and maybe it applies to other sports as well, it, it's the same phenomenon. And I feel like this is why so many people smurf in Overwatch. If you can play the game loosely and not be afraid of, of losing, you can play it for longer, you can have more fun, and I feel like it makes your decision making better because you're not afraid to just say fuck it and just go in, you know, just play Tracer and just go to that back line make a random reaper pick when when you just have some sort of um intuition a gut feeling that's telling you to pick it and then what do you know it works but on your main account you'd be like oh no that's a little risky you know i'm just gonna stick to the mccree you know you want to keep it safe playing it safe um can sometimes hamper a player i believe and on a smurf account it just feels um like all that pressure is gone so that's why i don't really play on main accounts anymore and when I made this video, I wasn't going to talk about that, but I felt like it's something that I wanted to share with you guys because I've been talking to my stream a lot lately about what makes so many people play on alternate accounts. You will see even Overwatch League players play on alternate accounts. Um, the, I could just list them all. I don't have them all right now, but there's so many Overwatch League players that don't even play on their mains. They don't even place them anymore. Um... It's like they're all playing on alternate accounts. I don't want to say Smurfs because they're all like 4,500 accounts. I don't know what it is about Overwatch that makes players not play on their mains. And I know a lot of people do. A lot of a lot of pros and a lot of streamers do only play on their mains. And they still retain top 500 the same. But then how does that explain why so many, why so many pro players do play on alts? It's something that I'm thinking about because I, I can't think of a, a solid explanation. You know, I can think of a bunch of really weak explanations like the ones that I listed pertaining to myself and why I play on Smurf accounts. But is that really the reason why we see so many alternate accounts? I feel like it has to be something stronger than that. Or maybe maybe the reasons that, that I feel are the same reasons that everyone else feels. That's definitely possible. I didn't um, have a topic when I st when I started recording this voiceover, but I just wanted to share with you guys that Soldier 76 is fun as shit now, um, especially week to week, because well, as the meta changes every week, there's like this period of chaos where nobody knows what to play. And I feel like in those scenarios, more so than others, a hero like Soldier 76 can really thrive because just to make a simple example, if D.Va isn't um, in rotation on a certain week, 
or maybe it goes multiple weeks. Um, and we sort of saw the same thing when Sigma was like the best hero in the game for a little bit. Nobody played D.Va. And then as soon as Sigma got nerfed, people started playing D.Va again. Well, I noticed right away Soldier 76 was crazy good. Well, for me, at least. These D.Vas, they, it's like they were all so rusty. They would dive me and they would almost feed their mech every single time, their whole mech on me. Because I would just I would just outplay them mechanically and use my biotic healing and just live through the entire exchange because it's like the timing of their dives was off and then even then their mechanics on Diva weren't that good because she wasn't played. And I think this sort of on a on a more micro level applies across the entire game. So I guess it's a macro level every single week. And Soldier benefits from this from these periods of of unbalance well not unbalance um in the terms of game balance but you know what i'm trying to say soldier 76 really benefits from this you know i climbed almost to 4500 um last week actually yeah yeah it was last week on soldier 76 i had like a 70 percent win rate on him i had like 17 games played we were almost 4500 i think we got to 4471 or something like that playing soldier 76 and no one even asked me to switch because i was just popping the fuck off every game it felt like um you're just on a flank and no one can touch you especially with doomfist out of the meta you know if the other team doesn't play widow soldier 76 just does so much damage um as long as you're supplementing it in the right areas at the right times um he can really really make a big impact i feel like he is definitely underrated right now um because if you gave him any sort of buff, and this is the thing that I, I always personally think of, if you gave Soldier 76 any sort of buff, at least any of the hypothetical ones that I commonly hear voiced in Twitch chats, it would make him overpowered. He's so well-rounded right now. And I think if you think about it like that, how if you increase almost any of his abilities, it would make him overpowered as shit. He would immediately become Tier 1 better than McCree, in my opinion. Um... And I think that speaks to the strength of Soldier. Now, he does require very a very consistent type of aim. Where if you're not if you don't really have that really consistent type of aiming style, I would probably stay away from Soldier seventy six if I was you. Because I've noticed on a, on a certain day where my aim maybe isn't that good, I notice that Soldier seventy six is not that good. But if my aim is like crazy on a certain day, then then he is good. So it feels like if there's like a 20% fluctuation in the efficiency of your aim, Soldier 76 goes from being an incredible pick to actually being trash. Because he's a, he's a hero that's all based on, around consistency. Soldier 76 isn't really a hero like McCree or Widow where, you know, you, there's peaks and valleys of your accuracy. And at any moment, you could just pop off and kill everything. Soldier 76 is kind of like, you're going to get the same damage, the same production throughout the entire thing. So if your aim is down by 20% on one day, your entire production is going to be down 20% for every single target you shoot at for every single game throughout the duration of the whole match. That's kind of how I see Soldier 76. So if you get on to play Overwatch and you love to play Soldier 76 like I do, that's how I would make my decision. For example, if you're having one of those days where your aim is just on point and you're popping off and your tracking's like perfect, I would say play Soldier all day because that's essentially how i'm playing him right now like if i if i'm having a really good day on overwatch in terms of my aim i don't really care about wins and losses but like if i feel my mechanics are really good on a certain day and this is sort of the approach i took to halo back in the day as well if my mechanics are on and I, my game sense is on i could lose eight straight games i still keep playing because I, I love to play the game when my aim is on but when my aim is off then my soldier's off and if my soldier's off then the game just really is, is less fun. It's still really fun, and I can still play it for a long time, but if my Soldier 76 is on, then I could I could play Overwatch. I'm not even kidding. I could play it for 12 hours straight. I, I love playing Soldier, and uh, you know there's no better feeling than, than playing him. I, I love to play him. I think a lot of my viewers probably feel the same way if you guys were Soldier 76 mains when the game first came out. So that's just a little something I want to share with you in regards to my mental approach to playing Soldier 76 in 2020. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and uh, hope you guys have a good day.